Backlog tutorial for beginners, how to use backlog as a beginner and start up your online project management. Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can use backlog as a beginner to begin your online project management for free. So let's get into it. First off, we're on backlog.com and we are going to click on try it for free at their home page. And they have a free version, which is very great because you don't have to pay money for your basic project management needs and the free version will include 10 users and you can create one project and you will also receive 100 megabytes of storage within your entire project so we're just going to click on sign up and over here you're just going to add your personal details and once i add those i will get back to you guys in a second now once you have created your account on backlog this is going to be your basic dashboard and you can see they have a pretty nice and clean look which i really appreciate by backlog because a lot of other project management softwares are now flooded with colors and they follow a very very colorful uh, color scheme and i find that a bit tiring to my eyes now i think backlog is especially useful if you're a software developer and things like project uh, version history are important to you if you want to monitor bugs versus requests if you want gantt charts and if you want to burn down charts i think for that purpose backlog is going to be especially helpful now on your dashboard you can see on the top you have your dashboard you have project you have recently viewed filters and then you have this add icon where you can add issues add a project or add a user now i'm going to start off with my project i'm just going to click on this plus icon and i'm going to click on add project now once you click on add project you're going to have this pop-up box where you're going to add your project's name so let's just say we have it team let's just make it very general because i'm i'm not a it person and then you can have a identifier for your project once you do that you're going to start off with your project space now first you're going to edit your project settings you can have your attributes and functionalities you can see other space settings such as your images if you want to allow wikis to display their images on your workspace if you want project administrators to manage each other if you want to archive a project you're going to do all of that from your project settings now if we go on home this is going to be your basic home page for your project and you can see it is a very different layout as compared to other project management softwares now you can add issues over here and once they are resolved you can see them in your progress bar over here now this is a good thing for tracking the progress that is happening uh, within your team or within your project and the good thing about it is that you don't require a separate dashboard just to monitor monitor your progress you can just view all of your progress within your basic home page after your home page you're going to have a add issue page where you can start adding your different it related tasks and you can differentiate them between tasks bugs requests and others so if it is a task you can add your task like update pcs whatever and then you can add a description Below that, you can add what the status for this task is. You can assign it to someone. You can add if this is a milestone. You can add what the priority for this task is. You can add a category, a version, and a due date as well. Once you select all of that, and if you have any attachments related to your task, you can do that as well. You're just going to click on add, and you can see one of this task has been added. Now, we're going to click on add another issue. We're going to add a bug. We're going to say mouse bug and these are very random issues that i'm creating they're not actually related then we're going to add a request to update update sales team pcs and we're going to add that as well and you can see once you've added your issues if you take a look at the left green toolbar over here we move to issues and you can see the different types of issues that we've created so first off we have a green task then we have a red bug and then we have a orange requests and all of these are provided with great detail this is something i really love about the backlog platform is that if you look at your issues board you really don't even have to click on any of these to look at their details 
because if you click on them it's going to open the entire task and you can view all of the different details but if you just even view them from the general issues tab you have all of the basic details provided so the resolution the shared file attachments registered by so who created this when it was created or updated the due date the priority as well the status for this and then you have the assignee subject and the obviously the key and issue type and once the um, assignment has been completed you can change the status of your task as well so if we want to edit we're going to click on edit we're going to assign it to myself i'm going to save and you can even create subtasks within a task as well and that is just very helpful in terms of general organization and workflow and task completion because you can monitor progress far better if things are divided into subgroups and you can monitor when the tasks are finished individually as well. So after your issues, you also have a board view of your project. Now, this board view is going to be like a Kanban view on any of the other project management softwares. And it is one of the views that looks pretty much the same on other platforms as well. It looks like just like any Kanban view on Asana, ClickUp or Slack or any of those platforms. And it works just the same. You can see you can move your tasks from here. You can move it to whatever kind of progress it has made. So let's say these are all of your open tasks are gonna be here and you can directly add issues into your board over here without having to click on add issue and going through all of that. You can add them directly over here and keep your workflow moving and streamlined. So maybe if your mouse bug has been resolved, you're just gonna move it to closed over here like so. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, going into issues and updating the status of each of these things individually. After that, you have your Gantt charts as well. And Gantt charts are very good at time tracking for your project. And this is a feature that is only available for a standard plan or higher. So you can't use this on the free version, but I do find them very helpful usually in time tracking because Gantt charts really do give you dependencies and priorities. They enable you to view different dependencies and progress bars in a manner that you can't really view on board views. Now, after that, you have your general wiki and then you have your files and project settings. This is going to be your file backlog. Whatever files you add on any of your tasks are all going to be present over here. And you can add a entire folder over here as a database for your teammates or your employees to work with from directly from the backlog platform and in your project settings as i showed you guys at these charts you have all of your basic settings then in your member settings you can edit the different permissions you want to give to a member and over here obviously i'm the only member you can add more as you go and send them direct invites so they just directly join your workspace without having to go through the entire uh, account creation process as well now you can also change the theme of your project from your project settings and you can upload your own icon. You can choose a different color or like a pattern for your project and this will help you differentiate different projects if you're working on a bunch of them. I like this navy blue one. And obviously this is just to keep everything separated and a bit pleasant looking to your eye when you're working so it doesn't look hideous or repulsive while you are working on your project. Now you can also add different issue types within your task settings. So maybe if you have more types of issues like let's say we have urgent orders. So you can add urgent orders and you can select which color you want it in and then you can add that as well. After that, you have your different categories, you have versions and milestones. You can add all of that from your general settings, not directly from within those uh, options. So you have to keep that in mind. And then you also have integrations available on Backlog, all of the basic integrations you could think of. You can get them over here on Backlog. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and you're now able to set up your account on Backlog and start managing your projects uh, for free using Backlog and I will catch you guys in the next video.